In this unit, we're going to study trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, hi everybody. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at that Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now which most people kind of default, they say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and yeah, okay, but we're going to talk about that in just a little bit here. But anyway, the Pythagorean theorem is an important part of, of trigonometry, the analysis of, of triangles here. Um, so we want to make sure that we've discussed this, and you've probably already seen this before, but in this formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, a and b will always be the legs, and c will always be the hypotenuse. Now, where people run into problems with this is that what if I give you a triangle where I label it like this, let's say a, b, c. So here's the right angle here. This is going to be little a, this will be little b, this will be little c. So I just, I just want to make sure that you're a little bit flexible in your thinking. Don't assume, just don't, don't by reflex think that the Pythagorean theorem is always going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, Because here, this is going to be a squared plus c squared, the two legs, the squares of the two legs is going to equal the, when you sum those up, it's going to equal the hypotenuse squared. Okay, So this is a squared plus c squared equals b squared. So it really does depend on the labeling of the triangle. Now, a lot of times though, I mean, we will label it as A, B, C, where C is on the right angle. That's just kind of what people do frequently. But it doesn't have to be that way. I want to make sure you get that. Now, if you're going to manipulate to solve for unknown sides here, one of the things we want to make sure is once you've got the Pythagorean theorem and you're using it, to make sure that you know how to, to figure it out here. So let's say you, you have the two legs and you're looking for the hypotenuse. So if you don't know the hypotenuse, you would square the two legs add that together, and then take the square root. And it's important to remember to take the square root okay, to go back to the actual side. On the other hand, let's say that you know the hypotenuse and you know uh, side A. Well, to get side B, uh, what you would do is you would first of all move the A squared over. So by subtraction, that's how you'll get it over there. And then you'll take the square root. Or if you're looking for uh, side A and you know side B, you'd bring the B squared over and then take the square root. So if you're looking for a leg, you're going to use subtraction. If you're looking for the hypotenuse, you'll use addition. Now just to show you that this works here, just to demonstrate that this, that this relationship holds, let's take a look at some right angle triangles here. So in this case right here, uh, A, B, and C, if, if I'm if I'm sticking with the, the idea here that these are going to be the legs and that C is going to be the hypotenuse, which again, it doesn't always have to be, but if that's true, then the way this works here, my legs here are going to be 3 and 4. Here will be 12 and 5. And here will be 8 and 6. My hypotenuse here will be 5. The hypotenuse here will be 13. The hypotenuse here is going to be 10. So this is just us looking at the triangles and pulling out the appropriate sides. Now let's do what it says up here. A squared is going to be 9. B squared will be 16. Okay? A squared, whoops, A squared is going to be 144. B squared is going to be 25. A squared would be 64. B squared would be 36. Now when you add those together, okay, 9 and 16 will give you 25. 144 and 25 will get you 169. 64 and 36 will get us 100. Now, ignoring these three rows here, now let's just go through and take the hypotenuse and square it. And so you'll get 25, 169, and then 100. And notice that they're the same. Okay? This is just to show you Okay. This is just to show you that the Pythagorean theorem does in fact work. What do we notice about the last two columns? Whoops, they are equal. So now this doesn't prove that this works for every right angle triangle. It just proves that it works for these these three right here. But that does give you a sense uh, that this relationship is is somewhat trustworthy here. That you can re rely on it. And just take my word for it. That that one there it does work. Okay, so now, ah, I got to go right to the top here. So does this work for non-right angle triangles? Okay, because the, it is tempting 
to think that if you square the sides, the two shorter sides, and add them up, that that's going to equal the, the longer side squared. But that's not true. And we'll show you right here. So take a look. Consider this triangle right here. Does the square of the longest side, which is 50, okay? So our longest side here, C, is going to be 50. And our, two other, our other two sides here, A is going to be 44, B is going to be 29. Okay, does it work that way? If you square 50, okay, so 50 squared equals uh, 2,500. And then A squared, 44 squared, I'm just doing this on the calculator off to the side here, is 1936. B squared is 841. Now, if you add these together, 1936 plus 841, when you add those together, you get 977. And these are not equal. So no, no, they, it doesn't work like that. Okay, if this isn't a right angle triangle, this particular rule doesn't work. And if you think back to our labeling here, it, it makes sense. Remember that the Pythagorean theorem works like this, where that c squared, a plus squared plus b squared, means the sum of the squares of the legs will equal the square of the hypotenuse. Well, if it's not a right angle triangle, there is no hypotenuse. Okay, for it to be a for it to have a hypotenuse, it's got to be a right angle triangle. Now, before we get into some questions, let's just one more little thing here. So if you're going to find the unknown side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem, first of all, you've got to know two of the side lengths. Okay? And then you can easily find the third. So first of all, identify the hypotenuse in the legs. You've got to see the difference between them so you can put the, the pieces in the right spot uh, in, the, in the expression or in the formula. So we're going to replace the letters in the formula with the side lengths. And then we're going to solve for the remaining unknown. So remember here, if, if you're looking for the hypotenuse, then you're going to square the two legs, add them together, and then take the square root. If you're looking for a leg, then you're going to have to subtract. That's why this add, subtract, this inverse process, you're going to have to move over uh, one of those terms to leave behind the one that you don't know, and then you're going to take the square root. Okay, that's all well and good. Now let's take a look at some examples of some questions so that you can, you can see how it works. Okay, so let's look at some questions here. So for the following triangles, find the missing side length, round to the nearest tenth. So in this question right here, um, the missing side length here is, is the one that's opposite the right angle, so we're looking for the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? And if, if our labeling is consistent here, we got, here, let's say, call this a, let's call this uh, b, we'll call this c. So little a is going to be 6 little b is going to be 4, and we're looking for c squared. So 6 squared is 36, 4 squared is 16 is equal to c squared. So 36 and 16 is going to be 52 is equal to c squared. And now, to get the final answer here, it's important to remember that you've got to square root that. So this is where we pull out the calculator. So now we're looking for the square root of 52. And to the nearest tenth, I get 7.2. Okay, and there's no units given, so just 7.2. Over with this question, notice that opposite the, the uh, right angle is the 18. But we've got that side right here. So we're looking for one of the legs. Because this is little x here, I can guess that this is big X. So let's call this capital Y, call that capital Z. So in this case right here, okay, Y, this is X, and here's our Z. We know that X squared plus y squared will equal little z squared. And now I can plug in the values here. I don't know what x squared is, that's the whole point. But I know that y is 12, and I know that z is 18. So x squared is going to equal 18 squared. Now because this was positive 12, x, uh, 12 squared on the left-hand side, when I move it over, when I, to get rid of that, I have to subtract 12 squared from both sides. Now off the top of my head, I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to go to my calculator. 18 squared minus 12 squared. So we're going to get that x squared is equal to 180, which means x is going to be the square root of 180. 
So x is approximately equal to 13.4 units, whatever, whatever units this happens to be in. Okay. A couple more questions here. Uh, this one's nice because uh, it's clearly labeled here. Uh, this is going to be little b. This is little c, and that's the hypotenuse. And what we don't have labeled here is, is little a here. But we do know that a squared plus b squared will equal c squared. And so don't know a, but I know that b is 14. I know that c is 21. So a squared plus 14 squared will equal 21 squared. Now, I'm going to subtract the 14 squared from both sides. Okay, so on my calculator, 21 squared minus 14 squared to get 245. So a squared is equal to 245. And my final step will be the square root. And so the square root of 245 yeah, 15.7 when we round that. So approximately 15.7 units, whatever those units happen to be. Now here, the one that we're looking for here, actually we've got, there's, there's two different sides actually that we're looking for here. Um, we're, we're looking for this one right here. And actually at this point here, I can't even guarantee. I know that this is a right angle here. I totally know that. Um, actually, yeah, this is what we're going to do here. If this is a right angle here, then this is also a right angle. So for this question right here, what I need to do is I need to figure out the length of this side. So we'll call that BD. And I'm using, I'm using this notation right now because I, I don't know. Is this, should I consider this side here opposite the C or opposite the, the A? I don't know. And then here, for example, I'm going to call this AB. If we're using that notation right here for this line segment, we might as well use this one over here. So to start off with, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this smaller triangle here where I have more information. So I know, for example, in this case here, I know that BD squared plus DC squared is going to equal BC squared. And so I don't know what BD is. Whoops. Didn't write that out right. There we go. So this is going to be B. Ah, ruined it. That's okay. Squared plus, well, DC is going to be 3 equals 5 squared here. So this is going to be uh, BD squared will equal, okay, well, I'm going to have, I'm going to bring that 3 squared over. It's going to be 5 squared minus 3 squared. It's going to be 16. And so when I take the square root of both sides, and I'm going, to, I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides, I will get 4. So now I can move on to the next triangle. And I know that BD squared, which I now know is 4, plus AD squared, which I know is 7, will equal AB squared. So now I'm looking for the hypotenuse. OK, so BD is 4. AD is 7, and that's going to equal AB squared. So it's a little bit easier to work with it in this form here, because this will be 16 plus 49 is AB squared. Okay, and that is going to equal, what is that, 65. Okay, and then I've got to take the square root. Okay, so I'm just going to enter this into my calculator over here. Just give me one second here. So it's the square root, 65. And I get approximately 8.1 is the value of AB. A little bit more going on here because there's a, there was a couple of sides that I didn't know. But again, if this is 90 degrees right here, then on this side, that is also 90 degrees. It's important to remember that that's true. Okay, so this next one here says Amjit walks the same route to school, uh, sorry, to work every day. To get there, she has to walk nine blocks north and then four blocks west. Okay, so sketch the situation and label the measures that you, you can here. Okay, so she has to walk nine blocks north and then four blocks west. Okay, so here's our situation nine blocks and then four blocks. Now, if she were able to cut directly across her, uh, from her home to her work, how many blocks is that the equivalent to? 
So what we're asking for is this right here. So now let's label this triangle. Let's call this A, we'll call this B, we'll call this C. And so where we turn from north, or where she turns from north to west, it's going to be a 90 degree angle here. So what we're looking for in this case is C. I know that this is going to be B, 9 is going to be B, I know that A is going to be 4. So A squared plus B squared is going to equal C squared. So that's going to be uh, 4 squared plus 9 squared will equal C squared. So that'll be 16 plus 81 is equal to C squared. And putting that together, that's going to be 97 is equal to C squared. Whoops, off the screen there. So C will equal the square root of 97. Again, that is a little bit of cal oh, calculator work. That's approximately 9.8 blocks. And then one more question here. A 20-foot ladder is leaning against a house. If the distance from the base of the ladder to the house is 5 feet, how high up the wall does the ladder reach? Oh, okay, that's, a, that's a good question. It's a fair question. So here's the wall. There's the floor, and then here's your here's your 20 foot ladder. Now bear in mind, be, whoops, because we assume that the wall is perpendicular to the ground, there's my right angle. So when I give you the length of the ladder, that is the hypotenuse. And now just to change up the labeling here, let's make that P, Q, and R. And so I know that that the base is f uh, five feet from the from the wall here. So that's going to be little p thing is, I don't know what little q is. That's the issue here. How high up does it reach? And I know that this is going to be little r. So leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. Okay, so, whoops. Sorry, I used a different letter for that. That's going to be uh, q squared will equal r squared minus p squared. So q squared will equal 20 squared minus 5 squared. Okay, so that's going to be 400 minus 25. q squared will equal 375. And so q will equal the square root of 375. And on my calculator, 375. So q is going to equal 19.4 feet. Okay, 19.4 feet. So it, it actually reaches up, I mean, quite high um, when you compare that to the, to the length of the ladder here. And that, that actually does make a lot of sense. If you think about it here, that little, that five feet out here really isn't a huge distance that that's off of uh, going straight up. So anyway, I hope that gives you some confidence working with the Pythagorean theorem.